Welcome to the video guide of Adapterama 1, where we will explain how to make double indexed Illumina libraries using universal stubs and primers. Double indexing means that two unique indexes, sometimes known as barcodes or tags, are incorporated into each DNA molecule of the library. Unique combinations of tags make it possible to efficiently identify molecules from large numbers of samples. The main advantages of dual indexing include reducing adapter costs by at least an order of magnitude and increasing the number of samples that can be uniquely tagged. iNext is the name we will use for our approach that produces libraries compatible with Illumina Nextera and Nextera XT libraries. Why would anyone want to use iNext? First, there are hundreds of iNext tags available, thus it is possible to create many more libraries with unique tags. Second, because we are using plain primers, we can reduce the cost of libraries. Plain primers mean that no additions such as phosphorylation or biotins are necessary. Third, because we can physically shear the DNA, the libraries are more random and thus more diverse. Finally, we can pool any iNext library with Nextera or Nextera XT libraries made with the original or quote-unquote A set of Nextera primers. However, there are also some disadvantages you will want to keep in mind. First, the protocol is a standard library preparation protocol, thus it takes significantly longer to complete versus tagmentation. Second, iNext generally requires more input DNA as compared to Nextera or Nextera XT. Finally, because we are not using biotinylated primers, we cannot use the nice normalization beads in Nextera kits. Instead, we need to use standard approaches for library cleanup and normalization. Okay, now that we know the advantages of iNext, what about iTrue? iTrue is used to make libraries that are compatible with Illumina TrueSeq libraries. The advantages of iTrue include, there are many more i7 and i5 indexes, and using those creates many more combinations to uniquely tag a very large number of samples. Costs are significantly reduced for buy-in, that is, getting started, per sample and per run because it is easy to combine many samples, especially samples from multiple projects within a single run. There are large numbers of tags which can be combined with TrueSeq indexes, and the iTrue strategy is compatible with popular commercial kits for library construction, such as those available from Kappa Biosciences. The only significant disadvantage is that it is not possible to make PCR-free libraries with the iTrue strategy. Thus, if you are doing full genome sequencing of an organism with a large complex genome, iTrue may not be the best way to make libraries. In all other cases, though, iTrue should perform equally or superior to the alternatives. Now let's see how iTrue works. As with all genomic library preparation methods, we start with genomic DNA. The DNA is then sheared into small pieces. If the DNA is physically sheared, the ends can be in several possible states. Here we show five prime overhangs on the fragment, but other possibilities exist. To prepare the DNA fragments for adapter ligation, overhangs are blunt end repaired, a five prime phosphate is added, and then a single adenosine is added to the three prime end. The A overhangs make it impossible for the DNA fragments to ligate to each other, which is to say it prevents chimera formation. The DNA is now ready for adapter ligation. Now the A overhang is used to ligate a stubby y -oak adapter to each end of the genomic DNA fragment. A y -oak adapter is characterized by complementary sequence ligated to the DNA of interest with non-complementary sequences on the end of the molecule creating the bifurcating Y shape. We use the Y-yoke structure because it increases the efficiency of creating molecules with different sequences on each end from 50% to nearly 100%. The Y-yoke complementary sequences in orange and the non-complementary sequences in black produce the Y-yoke structure here. The purple sequence is complementary to the I5 adapter. The red sequence is complementary to the I7 adapter. Let's begin PCR. We first denature the double strand, leaving a single strand DNA molecule with a purple and red sequence on each end. We will now use those as primer binding sites to create the full length adapter. We first use the sequence in red to anneal the iTrue7 primer. 
The iTrue7 primer contains the P7 sequence in lime green. The P7 sequence is used for clonal amplification of library molecules on alumina flow cells, and the I7 index in light blue is the first of the two unique barcodes. The I7 index was the first, that is the original, indexing position. After the primer anneals, elongation occurs. PCR continues. The purple sequence allows the iTrue 5 primer to anneal. The iTrue 5 primer contains the P5 sequence in light purple that attaches to the surface of the alumina flow cells, and the I5 index, which is the second of the two barcodes incorporated into this DNA molecule. PCR then continues. To make the final double-stranded DNA molecule, the iTrue7 primer anneals again, and the primer is extended to make the molecule double-stranded. We now have a fully double-stranded DNA molecule that is ready for sequencing on all Illumina instruments. The previous illustrations used iTrue, so how does iNext differ from iTrue? First, it is important to note that although read 1 and read 2 in iNext and iTrue perform the same function, the sequences are completely different. Second, the Nextera stub and thus the iNext stub have G overhangs. This means that the insert DNA must have a C overhang, which requires modification of commercial kits that create A overhangs as we used for iTrue. Finally, because the read 1 and read 2 sequences are different from iTrue, we must use iNext5 and iNext7 primers instead of iTrue5 and iTrue7 primers. Now let's see how to set up the combinatorial PCR. In this section, we will explain how to quickly and easily tag 96 samples using a process called combinatorial tagging. Here we present a 96 well plate that will be used to prepare your Adapterama libraries. We will talk about iTrue primers and libraries, but it works the same way for iNext. For each plate, we will use 8 iTrue 5 primers that are all distinct from one another, represented by different shapes on the vertical axis to the left of the plate, as well as 12 distinct iTrue 7 primers, represented by different colors on the horizontal axis above the plate. Start by pipetting the i5 primers into each well. Now pipette the I7 adapters into each well. Now we have unique combinations of iTrue 5 and iTrue 7 primers in each well. Once the primers have been incorporated into the DNA, the unique combinations of I5 and I7 indexes create a unique identifier for each sample within a plate. What do you do if you have more than 96 samples that you want to tag? There are several options. Let's start by assuming that you have 4 sets of 8 iTrue 5 primers and 4 sets of 12 iTrue 7 primers. You could use each set a single time, which would allow you to tag 4 sets of 96, or 384 samples, However, it is also possible to use the same number of primers to tag many more samples. If you start with the same number of primers as before, but use them in all possible combinations, you can uniquely tag 16 plates of 96, which is more than 1,500 samples. Now that all samples in each well of every plate have been uniquely tagged, we can pull all individuals together for sequencing. Now you are ready to send your sample for sequencing without fear of losing track of any samples and with confidence in high quality results.